Right, hello and welcome to the Honda Castle Mugen NSX, a vehicle that has been highly requested to come back to the game and now that's finally here, we see that actually received a name change. So yes, we are looking at now Honda NSX GT500 from the year 2000. Now, not only did the name change from the previous game, but we also see a price increase. So now this vehicle will cost you 1.5 million credits but in today's video we are also gonna find out why is it even in the legendary dealership and should you actually purchase this vehicle so with that being said let's dive into it so starting off fun facts or a bit of history on the honda castro mugen nsx this in particular is the number 16 vehicle this is the car that piloted honda's drivers to their first ever gt500 drivers championship title now why it's also a massive thing is because this was the first time in GT500 history that a vehicle had won the driver's championship title but not won a single race. Yes, with consistent placements of just high up the grid finishing your second, your third. Overall, by the time the championship ended, this car was on top. Anyway, Let's dive into the Honda NSX. So, this vehicle, first things first, once you jump into it, it has a symphony of an engine out. This V6 engine is just glory to you, especially when you are banging through those gears. I mean, just take a listen. But with this being a full-on race car, being in the GT3 category, at no points in this vehicle did, at no points were driving this vehicle that I think, okay, it's not actually good. It can be better. Okay, look, I did think it can be better. But the overall performance from the legendary dealership to the circuit, it's an absolute machine. So a point where I was actually doubting the vehicle's performance because. The first lap out, I was just getting a feel for how the vehicle performs and I set a 1 minute 40 second lap around Kyoto Driving Park. However, by the third lap, I then saw that time drop down to a 1 minute 36 second lap which is bang on par with other GT3 vehicles. So the Honda NSX is a strong contender when it comes to just using a vehicle out of the gate and I can see it being a decent addition to some daily races so it's just adding a bit more variety to that class now let's say you want to customize the honda nsx well you can then head on over to the tuning shop and actually apply well what you can do is just purchase racing soft tires a racing transmission as well as a turbocharger which is going to bump the power up quite a bit to us seeing it now produce 788 brake horsepower which is a lot more than its 490 something odd that it previously had and when I tell you by simply doing this it honestly in, it just unleashes a completely different animal out of the Honda NSX because this vehicle is just so much more aggressive there's so much more oomph behind it and you can really feel that when you are just coming out of corners and going down straightaways. The vehicle gains speed absolutely rapidly and you are bound to find yourself traveling over 300 kilometers per hour if you just have the gearing right. Because fun fact, I actually didn't when I tried to take it out first because the vehicle was redlining. But still, with the vehicle redlining and not having the best tune or the best setup in it, I was seeing lap times around the 1 minute 31 second mark in the Honda NSX. This Honda NSX, well the GT500 model, is just absolutely fantastic. Now look, I'm not one for GT3, but I much prefer actually just going over and reviewing a street car. But to just jump into a race car, it really makes you feel the difference between okay this is a street car this is a race car because you can feel they are completely different the level of downforce and the way that the vehicle is so planted is just bang on it's a perfect addition in my opinion to the gt3 category however when i did try to do some money grinding in the vehicle i thought you know let's try and do a 700 performance point soon 
So I then worked it out and I realized that either I can run A with no turbocharger added to a vehicle or B with a turbocharger added. So I ran both methods, I saw the one with no turbocharger performing or assisting a lap time around the 4 minute 8 second mark, somewhere around there and with the turbocharger since her lap time around the 4 minute 2 second mark which is decent this is with the vehicle being on fuel map level 4 and overall the performance was decent i can see it being a decent vehicle for money grinding obviously not the best thing out there but still a welcome addition so with that being said i can't really hate on the honda nsx as I said, I'm not really the person in particular that would be great at reviewing such a vehicle, but overall, from what I have ran it against in the GC3 category, it's quite responsive. I actually like the way the vehicle handles with it being mid-engine rear-wheel drive. It's different, and you can feel the difference compared to your front-engine rear-wheel drive vehicles, and that's what I like about the Honda. I just... It went above my expectations, let me just say it like that. So, with the Honda NSX GC500, I want to know your thoughts and opinions of this vehicle in the comment section down below. And with this being said, for the vehicle coming at a price of 1.5 million credits, it is not bad at all. Look, if you are looking to save money, don't go for this icon because you are more paying for the name for the history of the vehicle but if you are looking for gt3 performance you can just get that out of your modern gt3 vehicle but don't be boring go ahead spend 1.5 million credits on the honda nsx it is actually fun and it does decent in daily races so with that being said hope you guys do go on to enjoy today's video and i will catch you guys in the next grand Turismo 7 video peace